Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, freaks of all ages, Freaknet Studio probably brings to you, it is the greatest tag team in podcast history, the original freak travesty, Mr. 33% Dizzle J, this is Just Freaking Wrestling! It's that time to get us up in the ring with the greatest tag team in podcast history. Just Freak Wrestling, the JFW podcast, hosted by Travis D. I'm Dizzle J. Guys, we're wrapping up season two. This is the end. This is the end. This is the end. This, this is, is the end of the beginning of the beginning of the end. Yeah. Yeah, we are starting 2020 out. Wrapping up fucking uh, season two. This is it. <laughs> wrapping oh, up 2019. Fucking wrapping up 2019 with wrapping up fucking season two. Fucking okay, lost my train of thought, man. God damn it. That's all right. I've been doing that to you all day. <laughs> we got the but freakies today. The freakies, man. I'm so excited that we're finishing up the season with the freakies as we did last season. I'm so excited to be doing this. And it's cool that we're not only involving WWE and NXT, but we're also including AEW and Impact in right. our awards as well. Um, I think we're going to discuss doing some like indie awards and stuff like that, but we'll probably focus on that at a later date. Yeah. Pretty much it would just be ARW and SCW awards for right exactly. now. Exactly. So which we could definitely do. Oh, we could easily do it. We but could easily do it. I think SCW did their own thing, so let's Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for uh, our award to be shipped to us. Uh, I saw that somebody won a uh, fan of the year. Uh I kinda demand a recount on that one because I mean, who who uh promotes the uh company more than uh JFW who, does? Who won fan of the year? Steve? Uh no, no, it wasn't Steve, it was uh Oh god, I can't well, remember. Well, if it ain't niece, if it ain't Steve, no, it's got to No, it's not him either. It's that fucking, uh, it's that one family. And I feel bad because I think they listen to the show, but I can't, uh, I don't want to say their last name on the, I know their last name, I don't want to say it on the podcast though, but, um, it's, it's the family that, uh, gets, re- that was like really behind SCW. It, it's Steve's friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly who it is. I know their last name. I can't, their first name's escaping me. I know the they. pizza guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they named their son after Hunter, which I feel bad for that kid. So, but, hey, no, whatever gets you the uh, the win, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so, that's how they got the award. <laughs> yeah. So, I demand a recount on that because I do believe JFW should have won uh, Fan of the Year because, uh, well, we promote the, uh, the show uh, every month here on the podcast. Man, we've been to more shows in the Sentinel. Yeah, that's right. True that. Yeah, you like that uh, picture that was posted with Sentinel and uh, Maverick Cage and the Sheik? No, I didn't see it. It was amazing, it was, and it was from the uh, ARW show that I went with uh, Logan to uh, back in the summer. Yeah, and uh, it was it was just SCW during uh, versus ARW during that uh, span of time and everything, and Sentinel came out and everything, and to you know show support for SCW as a president should do, and it was surprising he did that for the first time in June, July. Even though it's been going on for six, seven months, but hey, whatever. <laughs> and uh, it got, got a lot of backlash from like Adam Cage and like Steve and everything on, and he's sitting trying to defend himself. It's like, well, you know, I do what I can, you know, for my team and all this other shit, which is all well and good, you know. Hey, support Maverick Cage as much as you can back then, but where the fuck were you at when you guys asked beat down by his own tag team party? <laughs> right. I mean, you really didn't come out, out of commission. Yeah, didn't come out to save the fucking day of that one, but. <laughs> Right, and he's too busy fucking sitting at home in his wife's robe and shit. But ah, we're not gonna dive into that right now. Nah. Maybe later. I, 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 we'll see how I feel. Dumb scrot. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're gonna dive into the freaking five here in a minute. But I just want to remind you all that this episode of Just Freak of Wrestling is brought to you by Audible.com. If you're just like me and you're a huge fan of stories and learning about history, you're just not a huge fan of reading it by yourself. Audible is the best place for you to go. It's the one-stop shop for all audiobooks that are available to you. And if you go to audibletrial.com backslash freaknet today, you get a 30-day free trial of Audible. And on top of that, you get a credit towards your first book purchase. For the next 30 days of Audible, it's completely free to you to use. Plus, you get your first book absolutely free for it. So if you're driving to work, you're driving out of town, you're going traveling and everything, and come back home after a long weekend from New Year's Eve, or you just feel like staying at home and maybe just listening to an audiobook, 
Go to audibletrial.com backslash freaknut today. Sign up for the 30-day free trial. Wow. Right? This blows me away. It's even easier if you have an Amazon account, too, because they connect. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the I think the weird thing is, too, is like, because I, signing up with Audible and everything, I didn't realize it was an Amazon-owned, like, yeah. product until I did that. I was like, God damn, fucking Amazon's like Disney just buying everything up. <laughs> it's going to be Disney Amazon. God, it's going to be fucking crazy. But check out audibletrial.com backslash freaknut today. Sign up for it and everything. It's an incredible opportunity to get a lot of uh, wrestling books that are available on yes. there. And they get read to you. By Chris Jericho for one. That was yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Did you see that uh, that comment that Ryback made about uh, Chris Jericho? I vaguely. His didn't. body's breaking down. <laughs> Don't know if he has one oh, more year left we, in him and shit. Know, you know what? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, we, I did see something about that. Perfect. Goddamn. All right. Let's dive into the freaking five, Jay. All right. The freaking five, of course, for our Rumble season. Mm-hmm. Last week was the women. This week is the men's. So who do you think would win the men's Royal Rumble this year? I'm going to get my first. Oh, wow. I'm going to do my first, and then I'll do freaking fives. Because I hate the fact that I always do mine after everyone else's, and then they, they match up, and I bet people are like, oh, he's probably just stealing the top names. I'm going to do my first. Okay. Um, so the first one is kind of like a dream thing. I don't think it'll really happen, but I went with AJ Styles. I think because, I mean, we all know that he's going to end his career here shortly. Probably right. in a few years, he's going to call it a career. I think having a Royal Rumble win under his belt would be pretty cool to have. I know he's doing a whole feud with Randy Orton and shit like that, but I mean, what's stopping Randy Orton from taking, like, you know, the fucking title and going to WrestleMania to take AJ on, you know? It's a possibility. Uh, Daniel Bryan, I think, would also be a good win, you know, obviously with his uh, kind of, you know, restructuring and yeah. building his character. Aleister Black, I think, would also be another one, be like more of a shock value kind of thing. Uh, Finn Balor, I think, would be cool if they, if they incorporate NXT uh, into the Royal Rumble, which I think they really should start looking at, you know, Making the possibility of an NXT guy winning the Royal Rumble, and then you can choose the NXT, to face NXT champion. Oh yeah, I would love to see an Adam Cole, Finn Balor, like WrestleMania Ooh. main event, you know, Ooh. or even Gargano. Uh, the last one I have here, I think I, I just put Braun because realistically, when you look at it right now, where you have Brock Lesnar and you have the Fiend, who are both champions, I don't see any. I don't see either one of them losing the title come WrestleMania. So you're going to need somebody who could compete with them at that level. And I think Braun's the only one that kind of shows that like great power outside of fucking bringing back Super Cena or, you know, giving Triple H one more fucking go at it. and Roman. Yeah, or Seth fucking Rollins. But I mean, I could, I could see Black going in against The Fiend. I think that'd be maybe kind cool. of making him a little more on the supernatural side like they've done with The Fiend. I would really like to see that. Yeah. That, that I think that'd be dope. Um, I got from our from our page. Yeah, Joseph, Ke- Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, Matt Hardy. <laughs> I know that'll never happen, <laughs> but it'll be Roman again. <laughs> I like that. Joseph's actually a new uh, new follower of the uh, page. So shout out to you for uh, liking and following J- JFW uh, on Facebook. We appreciate the uh, welcome, Joseph. Yeah, thanks for being part of this. Uh, so from the uh, Real Wrestling Fan page, we have uh, Ryan, who went with uh, Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, Alistair Black, Daniel Bryan, and AJ Styles. Anthony, he agreed with him and went with the same list. Justin, uh, he went with Alistair Black, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Cesaro, or Keith Lee. Cam, uh, she went with uh, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, Braun Strowman, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins. Um, Hussein just went with one, Drew McIntyre. I could see, I could see him going toe to toe with uh, Brock. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith went with Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, or Eric Rowan. Elijah went with Alistair Black, Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Finn Balor. Kevin went with uh, Drew McIntyre or Samoa Joe should win. Ricochet or Black are wild cards. Unfortunately, Roman will win. <laughs> Jamie uh, went with uh, Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, Alistair Black, Ricochet, or Kevin Owens. LJ went with Edge. Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, John Morrison, or Randy Orton. And then James uh, wrapped us up with Kevin Owens, Adam Cole, Keith Lee, Roman Reigns, or John Morrison. So, I, I mean, I hear a lot of the same names on the list for me, too. I had Finn Balor, Randy Orton, Styles, Morrison, and Braun. 
Too bad. <laughs> yeah, right there. I feel like there's a hair in front of my eye, <laughs> and it's bugging the fuck out of me. But and it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with Morrison because he made his re debut. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, a lackluster debut at that. Yeah, well, it's like you said before we started. A lot of them were. Yeah. So yeah, we're going. We'll dive into our uh, uh, results. Well, I'm gonna let you decide here. I don't give you a lot of. Uh, I'll give you a lot of uh, responsibilities here, really. <laughs> uh, not much decision making, so I'm going to decide. We, so we got the awards. We got about 14 awards. We're gonna uh, we're going to honor here on the show. So, do you want to do them all in one go? Do you want to split them off throughout the show? Um, I think we do them all in one go. Want to do them all in one go? You want to yeah. do them all at the end? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll I think our main event. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Okay, so uh Raw opened up. Uh no surprising. Um Samoa Joe comes out to help Kevin Owens after he got attacked by uh Authors of Pain and Seth Rollins and all that shit. No fucking surprise. Uh they're obviously building for something. Um as far as like I think we discussed this last week as like a six man tag. Yeah. He's probably gonna incorporate Randy Orton into it as or not Randy Orton, Ray Mysterio into it as well. Uh, Alistair Black uh, took on Buddy Murphy. It was their uh, return match from uh, TLC. Uh, again, it's it's a great fucking match. I love these guys and what they're doing uh, together in the ring. They're the only two holding together in the raw roster at the moment. Yeah, uh, Alistair picked up the win again. Uh, and it's one it's one of the cool things. Like you know, you would think like they would go back and forth and give Buddy Murphy a victory over it, yeah. but I think they're doing it so well to where it shows like Buddy Murphy is just right there. He just can't get the job done, which I don't think destroys his character in any way. So I think no. they're doing it the right no. way. But I mean, like, these fucking guys, I mean, they could, if they were put in like a special stipulation kind of match or something like that. Like, um, oh God, what the fuck is that called? Last Man Standing Match. I think that would be pretty cool to see that like a pay per view. Yeah. So uh, again, it was a great fucking match. It was a good opener for the show. I mean, it could even, if they wanted to, like, just, if they wanted to give them the fucking reins. Um, you know, main event, you know, Raw or something like that. I mean, that they could do it, and they it's, almost, it's almost like that Shawn Michaels, uh, Bret Hart kind of. Yeah, the, the smaller guys, mm-hmm. but not. I mean, they're not super small. Obviously, they yeah. both can be cruiserweights, but mm-hmm. no, I agree. Absolutely, it just, it just makes a whole hell of a lot more interesting. Yeah, Rowan had our squash match. Who gives a shit? Uh, Charlotte took on uh, Natalia. Um, it was a good match. I'm not, not not taking anything away from it. It's nice to see Natalia you know, back in the ring. So yeah. that, I think I think it's been a bit since like we've seen like a good competition like with Charlotte. So because they had a good run uh, against each other like in NXT matches, um, the uh, main event when that was still a thing and so that. So it's cool to kind of see them. I think Natalia always gets forgotten about to me. Yeah, she she's one of the best women on the roster. Mm-hmm. She's all even when it was back to the divas. Yeah, she was a she was a she was a wrestler, mm-hmm. not just a pretty face. No, no, absolutely, and it. I think they, I think WWE kind of like gets blinded by like all the up and comers and new stars and everything that they have. They forget right. about who kind of got them there. So uh, it's really cool to see again. Like, and it's not. I don't think it's so much of a few thing. It's just going out there and having a match. Right. Because a lot of the women's matches we see, they're either. They're either like enhancement matches for certain female superstars, or they're feud based matches. Like it's it's cool. Like I'm and I'm hoping they move forward in 2020 with it, and allowing women just to face each other, and not have to like turn it into a feud yeah. or have to be like you know rekindling something from the past. It's just like hey, we got talent. Go out there, have a fucking match, and call it a day. You know, it's like no different than like when Cedric Alexander took on Bobby Lashley and shit like that. Yeah, Lashley's you know fusing with you know Rusev. But he's still wrestling other people, so right. You don't you don't just want to see them wrestle the same person over and over again because that's who they're feuding with. Yeah, and I think it opens up more of an opportunity for other pe- other female wrestlers to get their time to shine and shit like that. Uh, Street Pop- Profits took on uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Uh, Street Profits picked up the win. Um, no surprise, you know, they're obviously pushing the Street Profits, but Street Profits deserve it. They're you know talented and everything. It's just weird. Uh, and, you know, you got the OC who beat the Viking Raiders and now losing against True Profits is a little bit goofy. But still a good match. Uh, I still love uh, 
Gallows and Anderson, I think, giving them another title run, uh, as tag team champions, would be pretty cool. You got two one-one handicap match with Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins taking on Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Obviously, it's a squash match. <laughs> <laughs> so no fucking su- uh, surprise there. Uh, McIntyre picked up the win. Um, I think because of who Hawkins and Ryder are, they allowed um, McIntyre to kind of like you know get his shit in yeah. and look good. So you know, they they like buying their toys anyway. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this segment, uh, I know there's a little bit of controversy on social media about it, but Randy Orton coming out and talking about his injury. He's talking about how, uh, it could be career ending. He's not sure, like, you know, what he can do Oh, anything. I thought this was great. AJ, it was awesome, but it was, like, one of the things, like, like, uh, like one of the writers or something like that had an issue with what he did. Well, so AJ came out and, you know, mocked him and said, you know, you know, I, I'd fight you all the time, but it doesn't look like you're able to, and. Offers himself up for the RKO like he couldn't do it. And then Randy did the RKO. Walked around the ring without the crutches. Got up on the ropes and everything. So I don't know if he just kind of went for it on his own. Called an audible and made a decision. But a lot of people are like questioning like his like. I guess, I, I guess in a certain way like his integrity on lying about his injury. And some of that. And building off the storyline from, uh, from the uh, from beginning of the live show. Then on like or um, house show, yeah. Uh, then it was like on Raw or SmackDown or something like that, and then, like even the writer went on to say like you know like they don't normally do stuff like that, but they want to start doing stuff like that to draw people into house shows. We know with the title change, the US title change that Andrade won the title right. against Ray at the house show and everything like that. So I'm still trying to figure out like where they're going to go with the storyline. They're still going to try to pull it off as an injury, or was it as bad as he said it was, or if like you know he's just going to say like yeah, I'm not really injured, I'm fine and shit like that. So I'm, I'm, I thought that was awesome. I thought that, I mean, I, that was the same thing. Uh, what's his face did sexual chocolate? That's how he got Cena. Mm-hmm. Um, how about Cowboy Bob Orton, who had the broken arm for six years? Yeah, goddamn, yeah, that fucking guy. It, it's just, it, it's, it, it's it, his it, character. I, th- I think it's just because it's a new whole generation of people. Yeah, who fucking like you know, it's like how dare you do that? You know, how dare we're you slapping fake an in, injury in right? wrestling. Yeah, Rick Shea took on Andrade. Uh, obviously, it's a good match. I mean, both competitors are really good. Um, Andrade picked up the win against him. Uh, and then we dove into the uh, fucking wedding. Oh, God. Let's talk about this wedding for a minute. Do we have to? We need. Well, I, we don't have to have to. If you don't yeah, have to. no, we, I guess we better. So, obviously, Bobby and Lana are getting married and shit like that. Because <laughs> that's a fucking thing. Uh, but they seem to keep getting interrupted. Yeah. And one of the most notable interruptions was the return, the long-awaited return of fucking Liv Morgan. Which, complete waste of fucking time. I think I posted on social media about it. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know whose idea it was for that certain return, but... I want his job because if you could just spew shit out like that <laughs> and keep a fucking job, I'm your guy. I want to see the video. <laughs> it is. I mean, I just, I don't understand like their whole concept is like, we're going to build Liv Morgan. We're going to do that. It was almost like that fucking uh, Emma uh, whole like transformation oh, yeah. to Emmalina. And all of a sudden she comes out, says like two words and fucking walks away and goes back to what she was. And I know there was a lot of controversy with uh, Sonia and uh, Mandy Rose kind of like, well, you're doing a lesbian angle. We have brought that to you like a year ago. Why aren't we doing it? And well, now they're talking about breaking them up. Yeah. So it's, it was fucking dumb. The whole fucking segment was dumb. Uh, actually, I want to look at Bleacher Report and see what they rated it. I, we, we knew Rusev was in the cake. Oh, they, they graded it. What the hell? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and obviously, big fun cake, somebody's hiding in there. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that fucking Liv Warren comes out, proclaims uh, her love for Lana, she gets dragged out through the fucking fans, and then Rusev attacks, and then she fucking comes back and throws cake in Lana's face. I don't fucking understand it. I I was hoping they would. As we, I sent you the video. Yeah. We, we talked about that. The fan made. The fan made video of, like, you know, like she should have been Let with the live. fiend. It would have been, that is so much, I think that's what people were expecting. Yeah. I think people were planning on her to end up with the fucking Fiend and 
Because even though the, the way they were playing the bigots to for her to come back. Vignettes. Whatever. Okay. I don't give a fuck. It sounded like you said bigots. That's why oh. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, I said bigots. 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 V. It's a V. Don't message me about it. <laughs> he meant vignettes. 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 Yeah, vignettes. God even, damn. even if you were to bring her back... As the fiends, or as Sister Abigail, she could have been Sister Abigail. She totally could have been, and that could have been her alter ego, yeah. just like the fire file, the fun house, yeah, Bray Wyatt, Pee Wee, Evil, mm-hmm. and you have the fiend who it it could have simply been done that way. Yeah, it should have been done that way. They don't don't tell us you're listening to the fans because if you're listening to the fans, I don't think there was one person that said like, hey. Waste our entire time with Liv Morgan's entrance just for her to come back to fall in love with Lana. Newsflash, nobody loves Lana. <laughs> Not one fucking person we, we loves Lana. like Lana because she brought out Rusev. Yeah. I mean, Rusev Day. That's what people like a lot about Lana. Fuck that. No. That, that was a stupid storyline. I don't know why she's getting this fucking push compared to anybody else. Oh, I don't know. But uh, that wrapped up Raw. All in all, it wasn't a bad show. It just like... I mean, like, you, you started out great with fucking Black and Murphy, and then Dumpster fired it at the fucking end. <laughs> but, other than that, I mean, it wasn't a bad show, so. There's been so, so many other weddings that have been better. Yeah. yeah. All right, AEW. What, what, uh, what other weddings uh, do you remember? I mean, obviously, it was uh, Elizabeth and Savage. Yeah, but that I don't think that got interrupted. I think that just went through. No, I don't think the interruption happened until, like, the reception at the end. Yeah. With Jake's uh, snake gift. Yeah. Uh, Billy and Chuck. Billy and Chuck. Uh, it was a Kane and Lita. Yep. Edge and Lita. Bully and Brooke on Bully and Brooke on, on Impact. Yeah. Um, there's another one I'm missing. So I, I really like the Impact one, because that's when Taz reveals himself as part of the Aces and Eights, who, yeah. He still didn't do it. No, he just kind of sat there at that point. Just took off. It was like it was like when Bischoff was in the NWO and he just sat at the announcer's table. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good. Okay, AEW. AEW. We started out with Cody versus Darby Allen after battling the first time to a time limit draw at the Fighter Fest. So Darby came back with a second for a rematch. Mm-hmm. I like this Darby guy. I like Darby. I like him. I actually like Darby. Yeah. I gave AEW a chance. And you know what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm growing more into it. I'm it's, growing more into it. And like I said, it's still brand new, so you gotta you gotta give it that. They're not quite as polished. Yeah. Uh, Cody ended up picking up the win. Got a D plus rating. Four way match for the women's championship. Let's see where. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so it was ha- Haiku Rashida, Nyla Rose, Britt Baker. Well, oh, and Rio. Fatal four way match. Mm-hmm. I guess this match was all over the place. Rio defeated Shida Baker and Rose. Got to be. I really wish I was able to watch this with stupid DVR. Fucking DVRs. Right? Yeah. John Moxley versus Trent. Trent is obviously from the best friends group. Best friends. Best friends. Uh, Orange Cassie is out there. And Chuck Taylor. I did not. It always shocks me that this is Trent Beretta. Mm-hmm. Because I, I remember him from WWE. Moxley beat Trent. Gotta be. Da-da. Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guerra. Now, there are some spots from this one I did see. And the fact that Dustin hit a Canadian Destroyer on the outside. That was fucking cool. Smooth. I mean, smooth as butter. Mm-hmm. I lo- that was awesome. Right. DDP was- Ogre's fucking helping him out. Right? Yeah. Uh, that match got a C plus. Guava defeated Rhodes. Yeah. Which I gotta say, for Guava to... <clears throat> Excuse me. To trust Dustin to do that... Yeah. Is really fucking cool. Because, I mean, that could have gone wrong in so many fucking and you're ways. On, and you're on that yeah. hardest part of the mat. Yeah, I mean, and it's one thing when, like, you sit there and, you know, you can have, like, Omega 
Cody, like a younger guy to do that. To have somebody, because I believe Dustin's in his 50s or something like that. Oh, yeah, he's pretty old. Yeah, to have to trust for him to do that is fucking phenomenal. And I think because of this match, um, he uh, he officially has wrestled in four different decades now. Is it four or five? Is it, I, don't, I thought it was only four. You, I'll look it up. Maybe, maybe yeah, you're right. It could be. Maybe it's five. I think. I. I thought. I. I know it's at least because four, it would have to be what, be like five. the twenty twenties, twenty tens, two thousand ninety. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Five eighties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I keep. I'm, I keep finding that weird spot. The fact that it's only twenty twenty. It's only been six fucking days. But no, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So five. So five yeah, decades. Remember, he used to tag with his dad back in the day when yeah. he first come. When he first started coming yeah. up. Which I mean, like even like a lot of wrestlers now nowadays yeah. aren't doing that shit anymore. I mean, you can sit there and say, "Oh, you know, yeah, Flair did it, Hogan did it," but those are the old school fucking dudes, yeah. Sting and shit like that. Which I don't even think I don't think Sting had four, four or five years. I can't remember if he wrestled in the seventies, but I think he was only in like the uh, the eighties, nineties, two thousands, and two thousand. Yeah, I think he was eighties, nineties, two. So I mean, like, but other people don't fucking do that. I gotta double check it. I mean, I think maybe the Undertaker did that. I think he's he's at least four decades. Yeah, because he was he was around before he was the Undertaker. Yeah, so I definitely I want I want to look more into that, but I don't think anyone like me, anyone. Me and Mark Kelly. Yeah, I mean, is there fucking is there any wrestler that wrestled, that started in the nineties that still kind of wrestled today outside of like Jericho and Triple? Well, not even Triple H anymore. He's considered like more of an office guy, but there's no longevity guy who started in the nineties. Who still really wrestles like today on like mainstream television, other than Jericho, right? Uh, or D- P- Dustin too, but I mean, started in the nineties. P- PCU from uh, NWA Power. Okay, I think I think because he used to be, uh, uh, I think he was part of the Quebecers. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. He just won the title. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh fucking our uh, truth too. Oh yeah. I fucking forgot about our truth. I don't forget about the guy who's twenty four seven champion forty <laughs> fucking times. Yeah. How do you forget about the only thing that keeps us <laughs> right. WWE relevant? All right, Carmella's boo. Carmella's boo. Don't tell Corey Graves. Fuck Corey Graves. <laughs> Next up, we had the Elite versus the Lucha Brothers and Pac. Mm-hmm. And the Elite was Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. I Weird thing to say, Adam Page is kind of pulling away from the Elite. He wants to be his own entity. Some comments he made while he was at the commentary. Uh, the results, the Elite defeated the Lucha Brothers. You got an A. So, I hate when I don't get to watch these. Yeah. Because I don't want to read all this. <laughs> but, and that was right. the end of the show. But right. So, hopefully, next week, hopefully Impact comes back. Because Impact's been off for two weeks. Yeah, it's, it's weird how, like, companies, like, work their uh, shows and stuff when it came to uh, the holidays. Yeah. Cause I don't think it was smart for AEW not to have a show on Christmas. No, I would have at least done a year review show or something. Yeah. I mean, they had the fucking uh, possibility to do fucking tape shit, just fucking tape something, you know? Yeah. Or even if they wanted to, fucking they could have, they could have uh, shown. Uh, they have AEW Dark. Yeah, they could have showed All In or something like that first pay per view they did. They could just release that on TV and just fucking record oh, it. Oh, they probably would have got hella ratings for that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm slowly like getting more involved in AEW. It's just I don't know. It's just like it's, there's a few select people I'm not used to. So, so I mean, you gotta realize at the same time that it's the brand new it's the brand new toy, and you may be like me at the point of times where like you know what, just because everybody likes it, yeah, fuck you, I'm not. Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna dive into uh, the NXT show, which was just the award show for NXT this week. Uh, before we do, I just want to remind all you guys that if you're looking for a way to help out the podcast and contribute to us to help us grow, Patreon.com is the best place for you to go. If you go to Patreon.com backslash JFW Podcast today, we have a bunch of tiers uh, set up for you to help us out and help us grow bigger and better than what we are even today. Uh, different tiers at different values, anything from a dollar down to 15. And each different tier has a different prize and award that attributes to it on a monthly basis. You get your name shouted out, you get a a wrestling card created for you. There's additional content, uh, podcasts, and uh, recordings that are accessed only to you just by signing up. Uh, be part of the pod- uh, Patreon today. Uh, like our Patreons we currently have, like Brandy and Becca, who have been around since uh, Patreon opened up for us. We appreciate everything they do for us. And you could be part of that, too, just by going to patreon.com backslash JFW Podcast today. 
Dude. NXT. NXT. NXT Awards, man. Um, and I can't lie. After them doing this, not much different than some of our awards. Yeah. So, shout out to Eddie for taking our awards. <laughs> All right. So, uh, obviously, uh, the NXT Awards uh, showed, um, they give out for the best uh, male competitor, female competitor, tag team, uh, rivalry, and uh, even match of the year. Uh, they opened up the show with uh, three options for match of the year. Well, I guess they ranked it, like third, second, first. And they opened up with the top third uh, choice, which was a fatal four-way tag team match. It was a ladder match against MSP to Era, Street Profit, Ooh. Forgotten Sons, and Lorcan and Birch. Uh, it was a great fucking match. Uh, that's where Street Profits picked up their first title win, uh, won the titles and everything. It was absolutely uh, incredible. Completely forgot about it because it was uh, pre-USA uh, era. Yeah. So if you didn't watch NXT on Daily Network, you probably didn't see it. It wasn't at, I don't believe it was at TakeOver. It was at a, just an NXT uh, showing. I believe so, yeah. So, a great match. Following that, they gave out the Tag Team of the Year. Um, there was the Undisputed Era, Street Profits, the Grizzled Young Veterans. It's a NXT UK tag team. Uh, the Viking Raiders, because the Viking Raiders were NXT at the beginning of the year. Um see here. Uh, then uh, Flash Morgan and Mark Andrews. Again, they're NXT UK tag team. Uh, Undisputed Era ended up taking out the victory. I uh, got their award and everything. Obviously came out and did. Uh, and actually it was this moment on this show that gave me one of my final freaking thought uh, questions for you. So I'm Ooh. excited to uh, ask you that one. Um, then they went ahead and did Male Competitor of the Year. Uh, you had Adam Cole, Walter, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream, Tyler Bate, and Ciampa. Which made me realize I haven't seen Velveteen Dream in quite a while. I forgot about that guy for a minute. Yeah. So, uh, no no surprise. Cole ended up picking up the win. Uh, if anyone else, go Gano probably would have been a strong Baby. second. So, Cole picked up the win and everything. Give an unspeed error. The third uh, uh, award for the night. After that, they went ahead and did the women's, uh, uh, the Woman of the Year Award, which was uh, Baszler, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Kaylee Ray, Bianca Belair, and Rhea Ripley. Baszler took the victory, which is no fucking surprise since she held the title pretty much the entire year up until the end. Uh, main evented, not main evented, but was in part of every NXT takeover, taking on a different competitor and uh, picking up the victory. The Survivor Series victory? Yeah. Uh, number two uh, on the list of uh, match of the year was uh, the war, the female war games. Oh. Yeah, so, that's so cool. Yeah, and I, I they obviously showed, uh, they showed a Majority of the match on NXT on USA yeah. uh, didn't see us. We we didn't make no, camera. We didn't make no, camera. We didn't, we didn't make camera. Uh, but it was still a good match, regardless of that fact. Really cool to uh, see that. Um, not even the um, not even the men's war games made the top three, but the females did. That's weird. So it was really fucking cool that uh, that happened. Obviously, they showed the betrayal that happened and all that. So. Um, that was number two on the list. Uh, they went with rival, Rivalry of the Year. Uh, there were no um, nominees. It was just one decision, and it was Cole versus Gargano. Oh, that, that was... Those were some ridiculous matches. Yeah. Uh, obviously, another win for Cole. Another uh, award for uh, Undisputed Era. And Gargano got one as well. It was really cool. I mean, they had a couple two-out-three falls matches. One was kind of a regular two-out-three fall, and then the other one was like a three stages of hell but I guess yeah. they don't be in 2020 and PG. You can't say hell anymore. So, cool. Hell in the cell. <laughs> Heck in the cell. Heck in the cell. What the poops. Uh, so, we got um, Future Star of the Year, which this was a, a blend of both men and women. There were uh, one individual to each. Uh, you got Isaiah Swerve Scott, Tanera, Cameron Graves. Um, oh, God. I'm going to fuck this up. I'm going to come back to that name for a minute. Kushida, <laughs> Zia Lee, Bronson Reed, Tegan Knox, Dakota Kai, and, um, God, I don't even fucking know that. It was good. I don't fucking know. I'm passing on that one. No, man, they didn't win. Uh, Dakota Kai actually picked up this one, which I'm not going to lie. It fucking surprised me. So, um, <laughs> I, I'm not, it's, nothing, it's, it's nothing against Dakota Kai in any way. It's just like, when you look at like you know future stars and you know the, I assume Koshida. 
Which yeah. Ben Kushida came from New Japan, like he's well known, but you're looking at a future WWE star or a future NXT star, Kushida seemed like the right move for me. Um, and obviously, I thought Keith Lee, but Keith Lee actually won a different award that we're going to do here in a little bit. Um, oh, shit, and I forgot to mention. Um, they do do an overall competitor of the year uh, between the top uh, male and top female star. So one of them are going to win another award at the end of the night, whether it been Baszler or Adam Cole, but we pretty much know who won it because this was last week. So... <laughs> Uh, takeover of the year end up being War Games, which is no fucking surprise because of it's the, it was. We it's the War Games fucking yeah because we're there. <laughs> it's to, to give Dirty some kind of fucking credit is because they had the War Game matches, but uh, I think we had that idea first. Pretty sure we did. Yeah, breakout star of the year went to Keith Lee, but uh, mm-hmm. to give out the nominations, uh, Matt Riddle, Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest, Piper Niven, Dominic Dakovich, Angel Garza, John Coffey, Joe Coffey. Uh, Keith Lee and Candice LeRae. So, Keith Lee picked up the victory. No surprise there on that winning that award. Uh, it was presented by Triple H. The rest of them were by William Regal, so I think that's a pretty cool thing for him to do. Yeah. Uh, to give out the NXT award for match of the year, we had Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole in the first two out of three falls. Not the three stage of hell type one, but the original one. Uh, we saw Gargano pick up the win and take the victory and winning his first NXT uh, championship, uh, heavyweight championship, becoming the first ever uh, triple crown. triple crown champion in NXT, and then the overall competitor of the year went to Adam Cole. Bye bye. So, uh, yeah, undisputed era cleaned up. So that was pretty cool. It's gonna be sad when they break them up. I don't, I don't think they're going to, man. I don't think they will. This, that's good shit. That's good shit. All right, Come here, Adam Cole. <laughs> Let's so go. Let's go ahead and dive into the uh, SmackDown results from this past week. Um, it wasn't too exciting, as we mentioned before, obviously. Yeah. Woo! It was like watching fucking uh, Sentinel talk. <laughs> Just a fucking dumpster fire of a fucking guy. <laughs> that old, gross fucking Stroke. eyebrowless mouth breather of a fucking guy. Anyways, SmackDown! Opened up the show with a triple threat tag team women's match. We had Brooke and uh, Brooke and uh, Lacey Evans taking on Bailey and Sasha Banks taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I don't know if you watched this, but goddamn Brooke's fucking swanton made me cringe so fucking hard at the end of it. I thought it was a leg drop. You thought it was a leg drop. <laughs> It's kind of what it's it looked like a lower back fucking splash. <laughs> I felt so bad for fucking Sasha. And I, I, I don't know whose fault it is. Did, did Brooks not get out far enough? Did Sasha lay out too far? I, I mean, it doesn't look like Sasha got the bad part of it. That's for sure. It t- totally looked like Brooke took the majority of that hit. It was. But it legitimately looked like she when she flipped. It was like a double leg trap on the Sasha. It was. It was a fucking mess. The rest of the match wasn't too bad and everything. I mean, it. It got to push Bailey and Sasha Moore's heels, and it helped uh, Lacey get more over with the fans and everything, talking about her daughter at the beginning and how she wants to be a strong, supportive mom. And then it gets Alexa out there in her uh, booty shorts. So really, overall, great fucking match. Uh, Brooks and Evans, again, picked up the victory in that. Uh, Shorty G took on Dash Wilder, because it's fucking Shorty G. Why the fuck not? <laughs> I didn't get upset by being called no names, no more. Yeah, goddamn, I fucking hate him. I fucking hate him. Shorty G picked up the win, got attacked by um, Wilder and uh, why, the Revival. Fucking the Revival. <laughs> Holy shit, why the fuck? Dash Wilder? Dash, yeah, Dash Wilder, yeah, but the other one. I thought it was Dash and Wilder. I don't fucking know. I don't know anymore, man, because they're bastardizing this fucking tag team. It could be Dash and Wilder. I don't fucking know right now. The point is, this is the first of the bullshit fucking returns. Yeah. The second, if you want to include Liv Morgan from Raw. And and it's not anything to do with the wrestler himself. Yeah. But. Dawson and Wilder. Dawson and Wilder. There we go. Because we are a wrestling podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Even we're trying to bury the revival. Even we. Holy shit. Anyway, so the revival attacked on Shorty G at the end. Sheamus came out what looked to be to help Shorty G just to fucking bro kick him. Which, no one should be surprised by it, because every time Sheamus comes back, 
He's a fucking heel. So. I, I mean, it's yeah. not a fucking surprise. But hey, he grew his fucking hair back. He doesn't have that mohawk anymore. Yeah. So has the long, weird beard thing going, but. I like, oh, no. I like, I like the spiky Super Saiyan hair for him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kobe T- Kingston took on The Miz. Uh, I guess we're seeing more heel Miz come back now and everything. And I think they're really building off that he's breaking from the Fiend issues and stuff like yeah. that. So Kofi ended up picking up the win. Miz is attacking Kofi at the end. Uh, obviously, we're going to see something here in a little bit where uh, maybe want to go get some, some conversation from fucking Miz. And then the third... Stupid return of the week. <laughs> We're John Morrison answering the door for his baby girl. So. Yeah. Never, never mind the A list talent that this man is. Yeah. And you could have just waited another what two weeks? Yeah. To put him in the rumble. Mm-hmm. We all know you signed him because you announced that shit. I hate yeah. that they do that now. Is he coming back with the old John Morrison music? Or you think you're gonna give him some different? He probably come back with the old stuff. Is he gonna do the fucking slow motion fan? God damn! I hope not. He, I think he still does that. <laughs> God damn it. Stop it. God damn it. Johnny Nitro. Johnny Impact. Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo. God damn it. All of it. All of them. How do you feel about this Otis Mandy Rose thing? I, it depends where they go with it. Yeah. Because if the fact guy doesn't end up with the girl, I'll be a little upset. Right. Uh, Otis took on Drew Gulak. Uh, we saw um, a little, um, um, a little uh, segment be in the back. Where Mandy went up, wished him a happy new year, and he's all sad because Dolph crushed his fucking mama's fruit cake with his foot. Otis went out, had the match with Drew Gulak. Otis obviously picked up the win, just making it more and more that uh, Otis is not Janetti. <laughs> I don't think there's a Janetti in that team yet. They're making a Janetti in that fucking team. Tucker. God, poor Tucker. Ron Strowman took on Cesaro, obviously with Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura at ringside. Strowman picked up the win, got a little attacked by uh, the group uh, following it. Roman and Daniel Bryan took on King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler in the main event. Bryan and Reigns obviously picked up the win because it's Roman fucking Reigns. Why wouldn't he? Finishing up with an attack by Ziggler and Corbin. About to give him more dog food because why not fucking ride something till it dies, you know? And... The final bullshit fucking return of the week. Uh, fucking Usos got out of prison and showed up. Uso. Yeah. Uh, trimmed up hair, cleaned up beards and shit like that. Looking uh, a little more presentable. Yeah, when you go to court, you try to look presentable. Yeah, right. I mean, when uh, when you see your own mugshot, realize, God, <laughs> you look like a homeless man. Not quite as bad as Nick Nolte's, but. No. Or even fucking drunk ass, drunk ass big shows. I've never seen this. Oh, God, you got to. Yeah, I think he got arrested for urinating in public or on a woman or something like that. I don't fucking know. I wouldn't, how do you arrest him? I, I don't know. So if you get in the car. Even they took Kong down at some point. See? I made a reference to a stupid movie you like. Anyways, so. <coughs> a, yeah, to a stupid movie. I like. <laughs> it's not Hale. It's one of the greatest monster movies of all time. I don't blame it wouldn't be. So, uh, all in all, SmackDown wasn't as good. Uh, Raw was actually surprisingly better, which is really not common to say. No. SmackDown is usually better. I mean, obviously, NXT is always on top. Yeah. Uh, but even for just being an award ceremony, it was fucking a lot better. So. <laughs> you got to see three of the top matches throughout the whole year. That's true. Um, he said there was no impact this week, so we don't got to worry about that. Uh, I guess we can do the awards then. Yeah. Raise some fucking awards. Ready to give out some freakies. Guys, we're going to be releasing some freakies here in a minute. But before we do, I just want to remind you that you can catch our show every single week on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Podbean just by searching JFW Podcast or Just Freaking Wrestling. Now part of FreakNet Studios. Bam. I was waiting for it. FreakNet Studios. Shit, bro. Come on now. Gotta get that dramatic pause. No, no, No. You can't say a lack of remembering shit is a dramatic pause. I'll call you out on it. Eventually, this shit's going to be recorded. You can't prove shit, so. Eventually, this shit is going to be video recorded, and then people are going to see that. Shit, the, the blank look. Yeah, face. they're like, oh, wait, what are we doing now? Oh, shit, we're making a podcast? You 
fucking your stupid <laughs> Starbucks fucking caramel fucking frappuccino. Hey. Not a sponsor. If that shit's on video, you turn the label inwards until they send a check. <laughs> what if they send me a free frappuccino? Don't count. Sell it. Do it for the views, bro. Do it for the views. Do it for the views. But guys, no, as we mentioned, part of FreakNet Studios, uh, if you guys don't know what it is, uh, clearly you've not been listening to the podcast for a long time, but FreakNet Studios is a network that is being built by the uh, collaboration of three different podcasts, Just Freak Wrestling, This Freaking Show, and Doug Gray Area, hosted by Sarge. As we come together, we're going to start producing YouTube video content for you guys to watch. Obviously, JFW is going to be doing our wrestling content as we do release videos of our podcast on a weekly basis on YouTube, as well as uh, I believe we're going to do some toy hunting. Oh, we're going to yeah. check out some wrestling figures yeah. and some wrestling uh, toys and shit like that. And we're going to do some reenactment promos and stuff. So JFW is still going to release their videos on the JFW podcast. That is officially on YouTube. You can check and subscribe. Right now, hit the notification bell for those videos that are coming out. But also, FreakNet Studios will have its own YouTube channel where you can check out those uh, additional content videos that we will be doing with Cartoon Joe from this freaking uh, this freaking show and Sarge from the gray area. <sighs> yeah, I talk too fast sometimes. I think you talk just right. I gotta get the information out. I don't want to be like fucking Sentinel that sits in the fucking uh, ring and like, and I ran across the moon and I hit fucking Mars and I don't, like, what? I played the trombone. Right? Like, I have never heard so much incoherent bullshit since the fucking Ultimate Warrior. Oh, I wasn't a... Right? Right? Come he, down, Taz. He is the exact replica of the Ultimate Warrior, minus the physique, the wrestling capability, which Warrior had very little. <laughs> Hair. So, uh, fucking celebrity status. Literally had nothing. <laughs> this dude is... The only thing he has in comparison to the Ultimate Warrior is his ability to cut a promo. And half his shit is like, what do you got now? Woo, 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 woo. I don't fucking get it. Stuttering Stan. He's like a blend of Ultimate Warrior and Bobby Boucher. <laughs> that came to fucking gather. <laughs> <laughs> with and, a little bit of Steiner. <laughs> yeah, with the physical appearance of a not quite formed conehead. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Conan. <laughs> <laughs> No, Conan has talent. I wouldn't compare him to fucking <laughs> Sentinel. Anyways, the reason I badmouth Sentinel is for a couple of reasons. One, he deserves all of it. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Sitting there telling me that our podcast is goofy. He's fucking goofy. Fucking mouth breather. Yeah, squared word looking ass. We put him on the map. <laughs> right. But also, I mentioned it because he is part of Southland Championship Wrestling. And Southland Championship Wrestling does have a show coming up on July 25th at the Shaban Civic Center. It is SCW, um, what is it called? New Beginnings. New Beginnings. So, match cards should be out uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, obviously, we go over the match card and stuff the week before the show so you guys have an idea of what's coming out. But I just want to remind you guys, all tickets are available at Fit Body U, Justice Martial Arts, and Glassworks. For just ten dollar pre sale, or if you want to wait to the sh- day of the show, not a problem at all. You can buy your tickets at the door for twelve dollars. Doors open at six. Bell times at seven. Check out all the amazing talent they have there, such as the family, um, Elite Pain, the uh, current uh, Genesis uh, champion, the Sheik, current uh, SCW tag team champions, uh, Elite Pain, and uh, oh crap, who the fuck is the SCW heavyweight champion? Who's that one guy? Oh, who's that fucking one guy? You know. Hunter Pink. No, wait, no. He lost. My bad. Uh, yeah, who is it? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to take everything away. I want you oh, to go ahead. Go ahead and say some it's, stuff. It's uh, Max Holiday. Max Holiday. That's right. The current SCW heavyweight champion, Max Holiday. Make sure you check out all the fucking talent that SCW has to offer, especially Max Holiday, our SCW heavyweight champion, and Hunter Payne, all at uh, SCW uh, New Beginnings on July 25th. Doors open at 6, <laughs> both times at 7. You, you legit look like you're going to take a shit during that promo. I was talking about Hunter Payne. Jeez. So, <laughs> he is the laxative of my life. Oh, jeez. Oh, fucking A. All right, so let's give out some uh, some of these uh, televised awards, some of these freakies, if you televised will. Televised awards. Fuck yeah. Um, 
Now we 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 came to an agreement on these. Yes. All these are it's not it's not one side, not my choice. We agreed on these. And it's cool, like I mentioned before, it's awesome that we're incorporating AEW and impact right. into it as well. Uh, maybe next year we'll focus a little bit on NWA power and maybe New Japan if we can ever figure out a way to watch updated New Japan and not yeah. some bullshit from fucking four weeks ago. Which, by the way, I gotta say, as an honorable mention of a match, like there was that oh fucking Will Osprey match from uh, Kingdom. Yeah, that was a good fucking match. Yeah. You see that uh, that spot where he did like the backflip uh, out outside the ring, goes back flip, inside yeah. the ring. God, yeah. fucking Will Osprey, man! If that match happened before our ranking, he definitely would have been higher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so our comeback of the year, we went to King Corbin. We're not going to be fucking impartial and shit that. Because one thing we do here at JFW is we don't sit here and take things personally and belittle people just because we think that they suck compared to what they actually do. Unless you're Sentinel. <laughs> so, I mean, King Corbin, he fucking... Yeah, I mean, he, had, he had a career year. He had a good year. You know, he, a lot of fucking uh, more main event matches and stuff like that on t- TV. King of the Ring. Um, I mean, we went back and forth on this one, too. Yeah. It wasn't just an easy decision. Well, yeah, I mean, because, like, our first option was Ciampa. Yeah. But realistically, like, Ciampa was gone for a majority of the year. Corbin was here year-round. And you compare it to last year. So it's not so much being injured and coming back. It's what were you last year compared to what you are this year. Uh, welcome back in the year with Roman. Obviously, he was out because of uh, his illness. Leukemia. Yeah. Uh, came back, and uh, he's the same. <laughs> same outfit and everything. Yeah. Worst booked. Uh, I fought hard for this one, Mike Canellis. Yeah, you, you fought tooth and nail for this. I mean, one. it's it's just. I mean, it, realistically, when the way you look at it and everything, like he signed a multi year deal and he's still just sitting at fucking home. So, I mean, other than uh, other than his wife belittling him on TV or him being twenty four seven champion a couple of times, horrible fucking. I think he has a better opportunity. I I hope WWE fucking like you know has a heart and uh, just lets him go. Because it's like, he doesn't even want to go to AEW. He wants to go overseas. He wants to go to Japan? Yeah, let him do his shit. Cruiserweight of the year, we gave to Buddy Murphy. Yeah. Just because I fucking love Buddy Murphy. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal pick. Especially with these Alice of Black series yes. matches and stuff. Um, worst promo, we uh, we looked, found one. <laughs> Dana Brooke, when she uh, confronted uh, Ronda Rousey, uh, which was her... Uh, this has no relevance to the promo, but it was the first appearance she did with no makeup to kind of show a more natural her. Natural her. Um, and then she started bitching about it. She became the voice of the fucking back. No, no voice whatsoever. Work on your swan times. Holy shit moment of the year. We get to uh, Champa and Cole oh, at War God. Games. Even we thought he killed Cole. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool is too, like, and seeing, seeing wrestling live, Anytime is fucking awesome. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if it's Independence or NXT. Being there and seeing the show live is phenomenal. But the, the feeling you get from hearing Champa's theme song there yeah. in that arena, fucking, it gave me fucking goosebumps. Like, I watch it on TV and it's just like another fucking song. But literally being there, yeah. fucking goosebumps just hearing that fucking song and knowing like what they just went through. And the fact that the song says no one will survive. I mean, like that's what War Games is all about. So it was a really fun, cool yeah. moment. Uh, best promo, we didn't stick to just one. We gave it just to Bray Wyatt and his Funhouse segments. Which were entertaining. If, you, if anything, I tuned in a lot of time just to see what he was going to say next. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a fun current champion, so good for him. I guess he could have been fun comeback of the year if we wanted to. Yeah. Fuck it. Not going back now. Tag Team of the Year with the Viking Raiders. Uh, yes. NXT, start out NXT champions and ending Raw champions. Uh, not only that, I mean, like, they, they, I mean, fucking Viking experience, Viking Raiders, war Raiders. Some, the war, the war experience, the war experience. Just idiots, I mean, stupid names, uh, faction of the year, we gave the Undisputed Era, oh, I mean, it's, it's no fucking surprise there, we got all the gold, yep, uh, heel turn of the year, MJF, you guys are not familiar with this. Cody fought Chris Jericho with for the championship, and if Cody lost, he could no longer challenge for the championship ever again. Well, some bad spots happened. Cody was kept up for most of the match, and uh, MJF threw the towel in for him. And the next week, they were going over it, and uh, MJF just kind of 
beat the fuck out of Cody. When I don't know why anybody expected any, if you follow MJF, mm-hmm. you should not have expected anything else out of this man. Uh, rookie of the year, we get to Keith Lee. Obviously, had a good run with uh, Dominic Dakovich in a series of matches. Uh, Survivor Series, uh, oh picking up a pinfall win over uh, Seth Rollins, getting respect from Roman Reigns. Uh, good opportunities for him. I mean, no surprise he won his NXT award this past week. Uh, female Rookie of the Year, we get to Kyrie Sane. Uh, jumping into uh, the main roster, yes. winning the tag team titles with uh, Asuka and shit. Asuka. Changing her character to a more darker look and everything. Really cool what she did. I think she's still recovering from uh, the concussion. Yeah. So. Uh, final two awards here. We got the Male of the Year Award, which we gave to Adam Cole. Uh, no surprise, again, champion, leader of the Undisputed Era. A lot of great matches with Gargano, War Games, and all that shit. A lot of great matches with everybody. Yeah. Then the final one. Female of the Year. I fought hard for this one. Yeah. Tessa Blanchard. Tessa. Who has been all over the place. I mean, wow. Impact. Mm -hmm. Shit, rise. Yeah, and I think she is officially becoming, regardless of what fucking Becky Lynch says, she's officially becoming like the face of a company. Yeah. You know, she's going to be the first woman to go after the Impact Championship, I believe. Like, I'm not, I, I'm not I, sure I, my I believe history, so, but, too. You know, um, but, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's shades of China in the Attitude Era. Yeah. So, and it's really fun, cool, they're doing just that. Just a little more talent, like, a way more talent. Yeah. She got, she got that pedigree behind her, so that mm-hmm. kind of helps. Yeah. So, a lot of freakies, man. Freakies. That's our freakies. That's our freakies for the year. Ready for the final freaking thought? I am. Let me see here. Let me see what I'm missing here. Guys, make sure you follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at JFW Podcast and Just Figure Wrestling. Facebook is the best place to follow us because that's where we drop our final freaking thought, or no, our freaking fives, uh, the match of the week, which uh, we actually got to do that first. And uh, this is Jay's pick of the week. Yes. Uh, the freaking five will release all information on independent wrestling shows like the SCW New Beginnings happening on July 25th. And uh, just memes and shit that we find for wrestling. And me bitching about how they fucked up Liv Morgan. So really, (laughs) head on over to Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on there to keep in touch with all the things we do. Because even when we start growing here in 2020, there's going to be more content to be released. And that's the best place to find notifications of when they're available. And that's what Dizzle J knows how to operate. Yeah. To to a degree. Wait, what's your pick of the week? Pick of the week. So, I don't know if you knew this, but... Thunder Liger retired this week. Jesus I saw the, I saw the meme. Yeah, I saw. I see, did you see the uh, meme where, like where he's staring out window with his mask on and yeah. sitting out the window with his mask off. Yeah, really? Thunder Liger. I think I, I think he was in DCW for a brief period. Yeah, Juice, yeah. Juice and Thunder Liger. Yeah. So I went with Juice and Thunder Liger versus the Ultimate Dragon. Which, if you don't know who the Ultimate Dragon is, this is gonna be a great spot mm-hmm. for you. I, I these are two guys I enjoyed watching. So just check it out. Let me know what you think. Do you know the uh, company it was in? I don't, but I'm pretty sure it was overseas. Okay. From the from the look of the ring. But I mean, this the man wrestled in his final wrestling kingdom this past year. And he laid well, he laid out, so Okay. Alright, now you ready for final freaking thought? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Rank these factions uh by Best to least best. Because they're all great. So I'm not, I don't want to say best to worst, but rank them one to whatever. DX, NWO, Four Horsemen, Evolution, Undisputed Era. Ooh, I'm going to go Four Horsemen as a one. Okay. DX is two. Three is NWO, and then Undisputed Era. And then Evolution? And then Evolution. Right. There's a follow-up to this, too. Like, do you believe, obviously, watching from the awards ceremony, that the MSPD era is the next Four Horsemen of this era? It, it seems that way. Yeah. And it would be really cool if they brought in Flair to manage them or something. That'd and be they, fun. And That'd then be fun. give them the nod. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to have him uh, manage them as long as he stayed chilled. I don't want him to, like, go over the top and shit. Yeah. Don't like flare the, it up. Like I don't want I don't want fucking TNA impact with flare. <laughs> I El- want elbow drop in his coat. 
want I want two thousand two Ric Flair buying Raw fucking yeah. Ric Flair. So we we kind of touched on this. Uh, Morrison's return. Mm-hmm. What would you have done differently? I would. I probably would have waited to the Royal Rumble. Um, I probably would have put him on NXT. Uh, I th- I think NXT is growing a lot more, and I think I think NXT has that weird hump that they still kind of miss AEW a little bit. Like I know, like NXT has hit better re- uh, ratings than AEW, but yeah. that's not gonna last. They're always gonna fluctuate back and forth. But if you get fucking Morrison on NXT, I think it gives more viewership to that. I don't think Raw and SmackDown need any more help. I don't think Morrison's going to spike SmackDown, but I think at the same time, too, with Fox pretty much owning SmackDown, it was probably a Fox call. They were probably like, we want Morrison. All right, well, I guess we're going to fucking put Morrison on here, but um, I definitely would have done anything else other than what they fucking did. Yeah, I thought uh, that was just the- I wouldn't mind a fucking uh, New Day heel turn on Miz and Morrison making this safe. I wouldn't mind that. I think that would have been good. Um, yeah. A lot better than, you know, going like heel Miz because I don't think you need heel Miz right now. Especially when you have to promote uh, Miz and Mrs. and shit like that. You know, you're like, you're going to see him be a bubbly fucking goofy dad. Yeah. But he's a heel in fucking uh, SmackDown. Yeah, I don't like that either. Yeah. So, like, a lot of other options. Fucking he could came out and been fucking Lana's love interest. That made more sense. Yeah. Anything would have made more sense. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, who do you want to see to become a champ for the first time in 2020 who hasn't been yet? Joe. Small Joe? Yeah. I'm a big fan of Joe. I love Joe. Yeah. He. I mean, I think he would have a good run with uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just think they, they forget about him. I don't know if it's because he's the next TNA guy or... Yeah. But I mean, they gave it to AJ, so who yeah. knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jericho body shamed, well deserved, or idiots. It, he's old. I mean, yeah. like you, know, like you can't expect. I mean, fucking look at. I mean, it's all different than Hulk Hogan, Sting, Ric Flair. Like you get to a certain age because he's in his fifties. Like just be lucky he's fucking able to still go out there and do right. shit. You know. Um, I think there is some value to what Ryback said about like his body breaking down and. He doesn't think he may have another year in him. I mean, unless he knows something medically about Jericho no one else knows, that's not necessarily true. Like, yeah, maybe his body is breaking down, but everyone's body breaks down when you get old. Um, but another year in him, like, I I don't think he was signed with AEW if he didn't think he was going to be there for at least four or five years. Yeah. Now, I think after five years, Jericho should really think about what he's doing and calling it quits. You know, be part of it, but not so much in ring. Because it's almost... Because his whole focus is he wants to grow AEW for the future. Then you got to step aside and allow the future to have those spots that you're taking away. Right. You know, it's like Hogan, you know, still trying to push for a fucking WrestleMania moment. You don't fucking need it. You hit the Hall of Fame fucking 12, 15 years ago. Call it, bro. But. Uh, is there any value in actually bringing Sheamus back? As much as I love Sheamus, yeah. no, not really. There's enough talent on that roster. Yeah, there's enough talent. I mean, you could have stuck him down in NXT and give him a nice little mm-hmm. heel push. Yeah. But I wouldn't yeah. have. Yeah, nothing against Sheamus. I mean, I like him. I think WWE could keep him as like a producer. or He could still be doing his YouTube uh, workouts videos and everything like that. Um, nothing against his in-ring talent and the fact that he can't keep moving. But it takes up another spot for another guy. I would have, I would think I would have more liked to see him go to Raw as a face and have a nice little round with Drew McIntyre. That won't be bad. Because I think that would be cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> Hogan trade for a possible return. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he gave me that look. Um, I don't. I, it's dumb. I mean, you're just going to see another Goldberg, Undertaker, fucking uh, Saudi Arabia match. I mean, who the fuck is he going to face? Yeah. I, That's why I said, I think I'm, it was either last week or two weeks ago I mentioned. Have a fucking veterans fucking style pay-per-view. Yeah, a, a Legends pay-per-view. Yeah. I think we're going to book a Legends pay-per-view. We're going to do that next week. We're going to book a Legends pay-per-view next week. Five matches? Ooh, you know what we'll do? Because I know we talked about booking our fantasy SCW show. We're going to do both of those next week. That's going to be our next week's show. All it's right. fantasy booking. So we're going to book our SCW show, and we're going to book our um, our uh, Legends uh, pay-per-view. you got to give it a name, too. 
You got you got to name the pay per view. You got to pick the venue, and you got to book it. Five matches. All right. All right. Are we doing that as freaking five? No, it's just no, it's just our just, booking. Just between us, it's just be our booking. Yeah, we could, we could do a freaking five on like what five legends would you still want to see compete? So I could read like seven people saying no one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That'll be our freaking five. We'll announce that. So freaking five for this week, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, check out our fucking Facebook page when it gets released. But five legends who still could go that you want to see in the ring at least one more time. Um, but anyway, we'll book it. So we'll do that. Anyways, to get back to your question, no, he doesn't need a WrestleMania moment. Uh, he's fucking over the hill, done. He's, he's not even that fact he's over the hill. He's tumbling down the other fucking side. Love Hulk Hogan, an icon in the business, but... He does not need another WrestleMania moment. If he wants to come out and do some talking, if he wants to come and make a save for somebody, you know, whatever. But he doesn't need to have a physical fucking match. You want to have a match? Pre-show that shit. <laughs> you got to take a pop-up powerbomb through yeah. a table. <laughs> uh, Cody uh, said in an interview that AEW's concern isn't NXT. And NXT's concern isn't AEW. But should AEW be concerned of NXT? There should be some kind of concern there, right? I mean, to a degree, there should be a concern because you're on the same night. Yeah. Uh, I, and I've been saying this since before this whole new war happened that yeah. they should have chose a different night. Now, granted, AEW chose their night first, and then WWE chose NXT on the same night, which is stupid. Yeah, but NXT released on WWE Network on Wednesdays. Yeah, but not until later. Doesn't matter. They still have Wednesday first. You know who says shit like this? Losers. Second place says, well, we're not worried about them. Bullshit, you're not worried about them unless you wouldn't fucking say it. Yeah. That's... If you weren't fucking worried about it, you wouldn't sledgehammer a fucking cross. Exactly. Fucking what's it called? A throne that looks like Triple H's fucking throne, would you? No. That's what losers says. Losers <laughs> says. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I know this is going to be a hard one for you, but who had the best return? Liv, Uso, or Sheamus? John Morrison. John Morrison. <laughs> no, um, out of all of them, the Usos was probably the best out of four. I know. If I had to rank them, it would probably be the Usos, John Morrison, Sheamus, and then Liv Morgan. I mean, Usos at least made a little bit of fucking sense. Yeah. They came out and helped out Roman Reigns. Their cousins. So, yeah, that one that one is the only one that really, like, makes sense. That probably has, like, a decent, like, crowd pop. Yeah. Uh, the rest of them, I think, were just like, oh, shit, we forgot that we have to fucking introduce this guy. What do we do? Just go out there and save Shorty G, but then bro kick him. <laughs> it's like fucking Liv Morgan was supposed to be introduced, and they fucking forgot because the writer didn't go and tell her. And they're like, oh, shit. Okay, new plan. Go out there and pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> All right, uh, I got I actually have two more questions. Uh, but uh, the last of the final freaking thought is: uh, Should NXT takeovers be more frequent, or should they start having NXT matches on pay per views? Because right now we're seeing NXT like takeovers like being more like quarterly, like during the big the big four. Um, should they be maybe every other month, or should they start putting NXT matches on WWE pay per views? I think I like the way the takeovers are right now. Just four times a year? It, it, it makes it feel more special. And it, it really just, like, puts it out there. Imagine, in order to get on one of those shows, you have to have that rivalry. Yeah. I thought you paused it for a second. No, no, I was just making sure the screen didn't go back. Right. We're good. But you really have to have that rivalry to get on that show. It's called production. I'm not editing. Fans. Go ahead. <laughs> But to me, it just makes it feel more special. Okay. I'd say AEW only has a couple of them. I don't even think they do once a month either. Yeah, second place does that a lot. Anyway, so, last question I have for you. 2019, we did a lot of shit here on JFW. Yes. We brought the show back after our hiatus. Yes. We released merchandise. Yes. We released Patreon. Yes. We got a sponsorship through Audible. Hell yes. We were growing our download and fan base. Yes. We went to ARW and SCW shows and watched The Feud. We had actual interviews with wrestlers and stuff on the show. Um, everything we did in 2019, what was your top thing that we did? Ooh. Honestly, the top thing for me would be War Games. Going to War, Going ga to war Games? Going to War Games. 
was probably one of the top, and then right below that, the interviews. So the top thing that we achieved as a podcast was going to watch another wrestling show. Yeah. Um, everything we did, I, like it was going to another wrestling show. I had never been to a pay-per-view before. Yeah. Okay. I don't give a fuck. So everything we did doesn't mean anything because we got to go and watch wrestling. Isn't that what this is all about? Fuck no. No. War Games was fucking amazing. And shout out to my mom for fucking uh, helping me get those tickets as an early uh, Christmas gift. Fucking awesome. Fucking mommy looking out. Fucking mama T. I just just think it to me because I'd never been to a pay-per-view. It's awesome. No. And that was... Just fuck with you. Calm down. Uh, Just calm the fuck down. Don't soil your britches. It was touchy. It was a fucking joke. God. Don't go all Gene on me here and lose your shit. i sorry, I won't screw. God damn, you fucking squash. No, NXT was fucking amazing. Yes. And, it's, and it's really hard to sit there and try to think, like, you know, what could be the best thing that we fucking did? And, and you had asked me this question, I think, a week ago. Yeah, and it's still hard. Like, and how I do you know still fucking to this down? point. Yeah, you got to find that, that pop factor and, like, yeah. what really. Um, I think, honestly, like, one of the coolest things, and it's, um, it's almost in comparison to what you're talking about, but it's. Uh, a little bit uh, smaller scale, but to actually hear our podcast get plugged at the indie shows, I think it was probably one of the oh, coolest right. things. You know what? I didn't even think about that. That was one of the coolest It's, I mean, like, to, to sit there and have, like, the announcer from Southland Championship Wrestling actually sit there and talk about it. Even having, like, even for all the stupid shit Sentinel does, the one smart thing he did was come on our show and do the interview with Steve. I did, you know what else was cool is like at first it got no pop, but then yeah. after after a few times we started getting a pop, yeah, and that was awesome. Yeah, so it, I, I think that like out of everything and it, 2019 was our growth. Oh, we yeah. started in 2017, 2018 became a lag, and we kind of kicked ourselves in the ass at the beginning of 2019 and just ran full through. Now it's like a rebirth. Yeah, now we didn't really commit to a show a week. We didn't we didn't do it like we said we were going to do, but I mean. 49 weeks out of the year, whatever the fuck it was. I mean, we did fucking Yeah, good. I was going to say, we, we did pretty Yeah, I think we were missing like a few, and that's just because still life happens and things move yeah. forward, and, you know, scheduling you know, inflicts that. Uh, we didn't get to a lot of wrestling shows towards the end of the year. Uh, I think I, I was at the wrestling school talking to a couple guys, and I mentioned them. Like, I don't think, I think the last indie show I went to was in, like, September. So it's been quite a while since we made it to a wrestling show. Yeah, I think show. it was September. But as far as everything goes, because uh, I not to dive into my personal life, but I mean, some people know if they listen to this ring show, I got I'm unemployed. I got laid off, so I'm looking for work. So as long as I you, find you're not fully unemployed, you still have you still yeah. have your part time job. So depending, I don't know if people the, think yeah, that you're not. Working. I'm a broke ass. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, uh, depending on hopefully if some hopefully a job turns up so depending on the schedule for that uh we are gonna be, I, my plan is to be at scw new beginning yes so that's the plan uh, the goal is to get back into getting to the independent shows and checking them out uh we've actually uh, got a lot of uh new likes and followers on the social media so we do appreciate that and that's all from all the shit that we released in uh 2020 like the new fucking logo in 2019. Oh my god! The 2020 logo got released three weeks early, and that shirt is available. So I'm really excited. Oh shit! And real quick, whoever bought t-shirts off of our website, let me know who you are so I can thank you personally because that's really fucking cool for someone to do. Buying merchandise from us does help out the show, uh, guys. It's at tpublic.com. Search JFW. Check out all the designs we have because all the design goes on different kind of products and merchandise that is available. For you to get like t-shirts and hoodies and cups and cell phone cases and laptop cases and shit like that. Check out Public. There's a sale going on in a couple weeks. We'll post it on social media at Facebook when that happens. It's a special thank you to SCW, ARW, yeah. PPW. God, who else? Uh, those are the big three. That really... Mama T. Yeah, Mama T. Fucking big, up... big shout out to Mama yeah. T. She really fucking helps out. It's because of her that we got a fucking freak in that studio. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> So really cool for her to do that. Um, as much as I hate to say it, thanks again to Sentinel for you know allowing us to be part of SCW. Uh, Keith is one that really brought us in, but Sentinel kind of allowed us to stay regardless of his idiocy. Um, and uh, there's still a plan to have a third host coming up. It's exciting. I'm excited. I'm excited for it to happen. I'm excited for you guys to hear who it is. I think it's really going to take us to that next level as we dive into Season 3. So, because I keep forgetting that this is the season finale. 
<laughs> this is the season. This is, this is the season finale. This is the final. Yeah, season. We can't leave on a cliffhanger. We don't have a cliffhanger. God. Um. I got nothing. That's all I got. Time to ring the bell on this episode. Perfect. As always, I am Travis D. I am Dizzle J. And thanks for listening to our episode. Just Rick the Wrestling, the JFW Podcast. Peace.